Hey, what's up? It's Jess Nick, WBLS, and right across from me, he needs no introduction. I mean, singer, songwriter, actor. Master chef. Oh. No, that's okay. <laughs> you cook? I, was, I do not. Neo. No, not what's up? <laughs> what's up, mama? Oh, everything is good. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. We back outside. That's I'm what saying. they say. Pretty in pink. I like it. I like Thank it. Thank you. Get my pink panther on. <laughs> you know, trying to be like, yo, yellow. Hey, listen. You know, the mask. Oh, wow. It was giving me the mask. It was giving me the mask. Just not going to let me live. But you wore it well. And my banana. Come on, man. It wasn't even banana. It was sunshine yellow. Is that That's what it was? If it was banana yellow, I would understand all the hate. But I'm saying sunshine yellow. How can you hate on that? I'm writing up a room. You wore well, and you inspired people. Ind indeed, indeed. Shout out to Lil Bootsy with the yellow suit at the prom. I saw that, homie. It's all good. It's love. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> real recognize real. It takes a certain kind of individual to pull off a yellow suit. It does. You gotta it be a does. certain kind you of cat. You gotta wear it. Just indeed. like pink. You know what I'm saying? Same thing. Same thing. That part. So look, <laughs> self-explanatory. Yes. The album. The album. It's yes. ready. It, oh, fi it is finally ready. It is finally ready. I, uh, yeah, been a few drawbacks and setbacks, you know, the COVID quarantine and all of that included. I started the process of this album in 2018. Right. And, uh, you know, got to a place, you know, was comfortable. And then COVID said, hold on a minute. And then you sat everybody down and, you know, just kind of shut down all creative juices. Like it just, it just felt weird to be trying to create when I didn't know if I was going to live a week. It was just mm. weird. You know what I mean? They wasn't telling you nothing in the beginning. That part. It, it just, you know, you just wanted to sit at home and just be around the people that you love and not worry about nothing. So, so them two years was kind of that, you know, rekindling relationships that I needed to rekindle via, you know, situations with my wife, situations with my kids, just, you know, re-realizing the importance of waking up in the morning and eating cereal with your kids. Mm. It means something to them. You know, we, we, it's, it's like, ah, yeah, yeah. no, it, it means something to them. It really, 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 really does. Um, but once I finally got back to back to a place mentally where I could make music again, we got back in and started working on this project. And um, the cool thing about being a songwriter and an artist is that I have an I have a uh, I have an outlet. I always have an outlet for whatever's going on with me, whatever's going on in my life, be it personal, business, or otherwise. You know what I'm saying? I write it down it becomes a song and it's therapy for me you know it's a fringe benefit that i get to share this with the world and and you know feed my family doing it but you know i i, I overall thank god for just the ability just the gift mm. because you know it's it's it saved me in 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 so many ways in in multiple occasions yeah. do you think the quarantine gave you time to perfect it not really i so the quarantine kind of put me in a funky place with my with my with my music uh, you know, I'm watching, I'm watching the world go and, I, and I'm looking at it. I'm noticing that the sound has changed. You know, the look has changed, uh, even down to the way that people kind of get their music has changed. Like everything has changed since, since what it was when it was me. So I kind of sat for a minute on some, like, where I, where do I fit now? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, like, okay, love is not the most popular topic right this second. Everybody's just on some hookup, hookup, whatever, whatever. Where do I fit? You know, and I, and I let that mess with me for for a, for a little while, actually, like the couple months where I just, you know, you started just second guessing everything you do, you know, and all of that. But I had to get come back to the realization that I have never been in the business of selling records. That is right. not what I do. Record labels sell records. I'm an artist. I'm a writer. And all that I'm obligated to do is be as genuine and truthful with my writing and my art as I can be. And that's and that's where I'm at. That so once I once I got back to there, it's like okay, now let's get in here and figure out what the hell we want to say for this album. Uh, um, but I never took you as the follow trends type person anyway. Nah, nah. Like you and it said trends. So you had a moment where you were thinking about following the trends. No, 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 never that. I, I had a moment where I realized that what was trend and what was winning was not what I naturally did. You know what I mean? It's like. It's like you perfect the art of basketball and then all of a sudden everybody started playing football on you and you standing on the football field with a basketball and you feel silly. Yeah, no, I went too far with that. No, but that, but basically, <laughs> you know, Just people are, people are going. doing things that I don't do. People are doing it a way that I don't do it. Um, but I, and I, and I have to give props to Usher because he's the first person I ever heard say this. He said, you have to evolve or you evaporate. Mm. You can't. You can't just get stuck in what was or what you used to do or how you used to do it because time moves on people progress things grow and evolve and if you're not doing that 
well, that's that's the the opposite of evolution is de-evolution, or or you might as well just die because the world is going to keep going whether you keep going or not. Right. So I had to get to a place where I realized that understanding what the trend is, recognizing and identifying the trend, that's one thing. Trying to become the trend is a whole other thing. That's mm -hmm. where we don't want to go. We want to identify with what's going on right now so that we don't seem like we're out of the loop. Right. But then at the same time, you know, we wouldn't be fooling anybody to get up here and try to sound like or be like mm -hmm. what that is. So, so yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the line that you kind of have to toe. And if, you're, and if you're a genuine person, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be that difficult. That's interesting because I, I sat in a session with mm -hmm. Usher, Brian Michael Cox, JD came in. Kings. And he asked all the ladies in the room the same question, like, well, what is a date? Like, do you guys go on dates anymore? It's mm -hmm. like he was trying to get information to see what women are about now. Right, And right. does that make it hard to do your music? I mean, first of all, the album's called Self-Explanatory. Indeed. Which means you're like, you know, I'm not going to come up with any crazy titles because obviously you've been in the game for over 20 years. Roughly. And we mm -hmm. know a lot about you. So... What what do you talk about with this new album? Um, well, my music has always been kind of a, a you know a peek into just what's going on with me in my life. You know, if you can't find it on the tabloids, it's, it's it's not there. Just listen to the records; it's all in there. Everything going on. Um, you know, I, there are some songs that have, that were inspired by you know the ups and downs that me and a wife was going through. You know, uh, some songs inspired by just what's going on in the world. Uh, some songs inspired by not every song that I write can be about me. Mm -hmm. I realize that as an artist and as a songwriter, because everybody ain't married, everybody ain't happy. Every, you know what I'm saying? You have to you have to make sure that you are catering to your audience. And my audience is people, and people go through all kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, so so there's some songs on the album where one would assume that I'm talking about myself, but that's not my story. It's a story of somebody that was close enough to me in the process of, you know, to give me the details to put that story together. There's a couple of songs I had to assure my wife wasn't my story. It was. It was it would have been bad for me. It's so, like, yeah. Trying to tell me something with this record? <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Well, I think you're an inspiration when it comes to those who are married. Because mm. people have this idea of marriage as being something that's grand all the time. And you have the butterflies. And that's not the reality. And I think the quarantine and mm -hmm. being locked down with that person made you, one, get to know that person a little bit better. Because Absolutely. people outgrow, you know. And sometimes, you know, you work so much... You get back and you realize, like, I don't really know my wife from my husband. Absolutely. So did y'all learn a lot? And that's why you guys were able to get back together? Oh, yeah, man. The, the, I mean, the quarantine was not a positive thing for a lot of people. So, you know, I, I would never, you know, disrespect the, anybody that lost anybody. I lost people during yeah. the quarantine. You know, so when I say things like thank God for the quarantine, I'm talking specifically about the fact that the quarantine forced me and my wife to sit down and have those uncomfortable conversations that we just weren't having. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Those uncomfortable yet necessary conversations. Uh, uh, just solving problems, just everyday problems. You know, we, we clearly got beef, but uh, I'll see you in three weeks. I got a, I got a tour, you know. That, you come home and then you done packed it down and you pack it down and pack it down and pack it down until something small happens and it's an explosion, mm -hmm. you know? That's where we had got to, so we, we we took the opportunity to really see, I mean, mind you, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy at all. The, the first thing that you have to do, which is the hardest thing, all pride has to come off the table. Mm. You can't come into this full of pride because now, as I'm trying to tell you how you've made me feel or what bothers me about you, you're just going to get defensive and you're not going to hear me, right? Mind you, this, this is her talking to me now. <laughs> okay. <Right>. So, <laughs> so, so, you know, took pride off the table. And it's and it's really hard to sit and just listen to somebody tell you about yourself, you know, even or how if, you made them feel. Yeah, yeah. Even if you are wrong, even if, you know, it's it's hard to just sit and and hear that, you know, and vice versa. You know, it wasn't easy for I didn't have as many things to say to her about you know what I didn't like. Well, you you snore loud, and I want you to stop snoring loud so we can so we can survive. Shut up! Uh, no, I don't got I don't got nothing. Damn! All right, all right. It's me. It's me. Right. No, nah, but um, I think that we came to the realization that the fact that we love each other beyond mm -hmm. the shadow of a doubt, that could never be denied or questioned, even through going through whatever we was going through. Like, could never say that I don't love my wife, and, I, and no one could ever say that she doesn't love me. And that sits above everything. You know what I mean? It's, it's whatever, whatever issue that we face is us facing it, and what's stronger than us. Whatever we allow to be. So if we don't let nothing be stronger than us, then nothing will be. And, we, and you survive. 
It's not easy, of course. Yeah. Of course, it's not easy. Not easy to deal with another person all day long, all the time, every day. That's not easy. But it's worth it if it's the right person. It's worth it. Mm -hmm. So, as a married man, mm -hmm. if you could help other married men out there, mm -hmm. what would you say is the one thing you've learned about women since being married? Um. Okay. So. Anybody that knows anything about women will talk about the complication that is a woman. Mm. What I've learned is that that is a bit of a blanket statement and a bit of a cop out because it's not so much that y'all are complicated. It's, it's that we're complicated. Well, I mean, th there's complication to you. The, 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 you're, you are by no means simple creatures. That is not it at all. However, you're not as complicated as some men would make you out to be. Like women are just impossible. They want you to. They want you to tell the truth. Who the hell can do that? It's, you know, what I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot Why of times. Why can't y'all tell the truth? Well, though? I mean, well, that's that's what I'm getting to. It's a lot of times we'll make excuses for things that we just don't want to do, and turn it around on y'all like like y'all are being impossible or y'all are being difficult. And it's like, nah, that's not the case, bro. It's really a matter of it. I love I love my manager. I love my manager Tango. Because he's the kind of person that is not going to sugarcoat anything, not going, not going to pull a punch. You know what I'm saying? And he's one of he's, you know, he's an older gentleman. He's 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 seasoned. He's been around. So like he's the one who I go to when I really need advice on something. And in the heat of me and the wife talking about divorce, he simply says to me, "Well, do you still want to be married?" I'm like, "Yeah." Mm -hmm. He's like, "Well, we'll quit cheating." That's it. That part. What else you want? And I'm like. All right, thanks, thank you, I appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? It, you feel stupid for a second because it literally is that simple. Make a decision. Make a decision. What you gonna do? You know that one decision guarantee could possibly guarantee happiness with this person, and the other decision guarantees that this person is gonna walk away. And if you don't want that to happen, well, then you know what decision you need to make. So now it's just about making that decision and sticking to it. And that's just that's just a discipline play. You know, figure out figure out your discipline. But a lot of men say that. They're physical beings, mm -hmm. and so they can detach emotions yes. from being with women. That's and true. Most of the reason, most of the time, that's their excuse: is that it was just sex. I don't love you. Well, I, I love you. There, there are there are some men, and I, I I hate to admit it, present company included, that can detach emotions from sex because sex and love are not the same thing. Mm. They're not the same thing. But the soul tie, you don't believe in soul ties? I definitely believe in soul ties. But you, you can't tell me that you soul tie with every person you have sex with. But is there not an energetic connection? Connection of connection of energy, that that has nothing to do with with love as much as it does physical energy, electricity, the 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 the, the the life source that that runs your body like you sharing that with somebody doesn't necessarily connect you with the person at the soul there has to be some sort of decision made there between those two people like i'm not gonna i'm not gonna i'm not gonna share that part that part of myself with you if i don't if i know that i'm not gonna be with you mm. And, and mind you, this is this Men is a difficult. Men are better. You guys are better at doing that. This than is a women. difficult concept for women to, to to grasp because everything about a woman, everything about a woman is internal. It's it's different for y'all. You know, for y'all, you're you're letting someone into your person. So yeah, so it's it's a deeper connection for y'all, and that's what men don't tend to understand. Mm. Because it's one thing for you to understand. It's one thing for you to understand something. It's another thing to be mad at somebody else for not understanding it. When it's like that, well, they just they don't think that way. That's not the way that they comprehend it. It's like you sitting and trying to explain to me uh, uh, something that is 100% a woman. <clears throat> I can comprehend, but I may not totally understand because I don't, I don't think like that. Like on, only women think like that. Only women deal with that or whatever, whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like that's the, that's the rub most of the time. Uh, love languages and all of that. You know, it's, it's, you can't go into a love situation on some selfish Mm. Whereas, okay, well, this is how I love. Well, what if that ain't? What, what if that don't work for me? But you talking about you want to love me? You can't go into it like that. And and men tend to go into it like, well, this is how I am, and this is what I do, and and rock with me or don't. Well, then you don't need to be in a relationship because one of the key elements of a relationship is compromise. And if you can't compromise at all with this person that you claim to love, then you you're not supposed to be in a relationship. You got to figure you got to figure out some things about you first. That part. Dropping gems. Nah, learning as I go. Learning as I go. Because I, I can never learning. act holier than thou. I've never claimed to be perfect. I'm, I'm figuring it out too. And, yeah. and that's, you know, that's, that's the best that anybody can ask for. Well, the communication part is the biggest factor. And the comprehension part. Well, that part. The application. 
of it. Indeed. Because you can listen all day, but if you don't make the changes, what, what we're doing. Make? I just told you a lovely story and you, <laughs> you went part. on about your business. Yeah. That part. Mm -hmm. So what is the biggest misconception about Neo in your eyes? Um, the only one that, that I ever tend to, to bother myself with, and mind you, I only bother myself with it for a minute because I, I genuinely realize that everyone has an opinion. Therefore, opinions are not special. Everybody has one. What makes, what makes yours any more special than mine? So if I don't like yours, I'm just going to not pay attention to yours. And that's, and that's what, I, what I tend to do. That's why I don't really get bothered by comments and, and you know, people's opinion of things that I say. It's like, all right, well, you feel that way and, and you're entitled to that. And I feel this way. As human beings, we're entitled to disagree. I kind of get bothered by this, this perfection misconception that people put on me. Because because I've deemed myself a gentleman, that means that I'm not that I don't make mistakes. That means that you know that I'm not a human being that's flawed like everybody else. And that's kind of the plight of a lot of celebrities. It's like you know, if you run a red light, you, ain't nobody tripping off you. But if I run a red light and paparazzi happens to catch me, now this is this is this is shade room worthy news. And I'm like, wait, I just ran a red light. Like you know what I'm saying? And that's that's I tend to. I tend to have problem with that, have issue with that. It's like people think that celebrity means that you're not a human being anymore. Mm. To where when you make human mistakes, you get crucified as if the people throwing the stones haven't made the same mistakes or aren't the, the, the you know, aren't flesh and blood like you. Like that, that bothers me sometimes. But then on the other side of that, you know, you can only really be bothered by the things that you allow to bother you. So I'll let it in for a second and then realize that I don't like how it feels and then I'll go on by my business. There you go. So getting back to the album, mm -hmm. do you have a lot of songs on this project? Um, there are about 12, 13 records. 13, yeah, about 13, 14 records on the album. Okay. Yeah. And are you satisfied with that number? Because, you know, recently um, Chris Brown, he likes to put out a lot of songs on his projects. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't so happy with the response or the support. I, I kind of felt him on that. I kind of yeah. felt him on that. He said something along the lines of the only time that people really you know, look up and pay attention is when he in some trouble. And that's kind of true. And I, that's, I think that that's kind of just how we're wired. It's like, all right, if you're driving down the street and you roll past a playground and you see some kids playing, you might look over and smile, but you're going to keep going. However, if you're driving down the street and you see a car on fire, mm -hmm. you're going to slow down. Oh, what happened over here? What the, what is that? We're kind of just naturally drawn to chaos. And I, I hate that that's true. But it is. It's like, mind you, I've heard Chris's route. I've heard, I've heard Chris's album. It's amazing. It's good. Right? Yeah. It's quality work. But, you know, if Chris Brown turn around and slap somebody tomorrow, he'd be on the front of every, you know, he'd be front page news. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of messed up that, that it is how it is. But, I mean, what do you do? Right. What do you do? Do you worry about that as an R&B artist? No, nah, not really. I'm, I'm at a place in this where... I mean, don't get me wrong. Nobody puts out a project and doesn't want it to do well. Right. Of course. I'm just at a place where I'm at peace with whatever comes my way. Like what's for me is going to come to me. I'm never going to miss something that's for me. God told me that. So I'm good. You know what I mean? If, if, and, if, and if it don't happen the way that I want it to happen or whatever the case may be, then clearly that wasn't for me. You know, you have to you have to pay attention to the fact that some of the things that God keeps you away from, even if it's something that you want, he's, try, he's, he's trying to help you. You know, it might be some over there that ain't for you, you know. So I so I look at it like this. I'm a, I'm a put, I put a project out full of music that I enjoy, full of music that feels good to me. And I feel like those like minded people are going to gravitate to me and anybody that's not. All right. Well, it's the best album you didn't get to hear because you chose otherwise. And that's your problem. Meanwhile, my kids are going to eat the same way they eat right now, you know, and, and I think I, by the grace of God, I've been blessed in the music industry. You know, I've been blessed to still be here. Uh, I've been smart with my money, you know, so, so I, you know, you might, you secure the family first and then, and then you shoot the shot, but you shoot the shot knowing that should you miss everybody back here still. All right. And that's, yeah. that's the way I do things now. So I want you to enjoy it, but if you don't, all right, well, you know, we ain't going nowhere. You'll figure it out at some point. That part. So your single's out. Yes. Is the video out for it? Uh, the video for Don't Love Me is out. Shout out to, uh, to Tyler LaPlay. Shout out to Soraya. Uh, for for you know tackling the acting part of the video, uh, yes, the video for Don't Love Me is out right now. The video for You Got the Body is out right now, mm. uh, uh, featuring some of the most amazing dancers I've ever seen. Not to mention uh, my beautiful wife Crystal Smith. And uh, yeah, man, you can find them joints anywhere that people are watching. Where do people even watch videos now? Like where where do you where is that happening? That part. 
Well, the, the, somebody, somebody Are we still watching VH1, BT? I mean, it, yeah, back? but but now it'd be mainly TV shows. It don't be, you know, remember yeah. that when there was like a block of just videos in the middle of the day? Like, when did, they don't do that no more. Would you ever do a reality show? Uh, mm, I would have to have some some control if I was going to do a reality show. Like, I, I couldn't go to one of the existing ones as a cast member. Nah, nah. Cause It'll be your own show. I, it would have to be something that I had some sort of control in. Because, mind you, the narrative, the person that controls the narrative, yes. you understand. And I, I can't have nobody controlling my narrative. That Their their sole mission is to is to find some drama. Like, I don't need, I don't need that. I live mm. a very stress-free life. I want to keep that. They say the drama sells, though. It does. It does. However, it's not the only thing that sells. Yeah. It ain't the only way to push a project. You that know, part. you know, it's easier, and that tends to be what people dig nowadays. You know, they they want to go the easy route. And I ain't mad at you. I ain't mad at you. Of course not. However, it's not for me. The album is about love. It's about the ups and downs. The album is marriage. about the the. That's the self-explanatory part. I feel like. To the diehard Neo fan, you already know what this album is going to be. You know that it's music to live your life to. It's music to, to break up to. It's music to get back together to. It's music to get ready to go to the club to. It's a song or two you might hear at the club. You know what I mean? It's music to get sexy to. It's music to clean the house on Sunday to. You, you simply push play and you apply the song where it makes sense in your life. That's what you do with a Neo album. Are you outside now? I'm, I'm outside, but I'm outside with purpose. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I hang out. Very rarely, you know. I have five beautiful children yes, and a wife. So, so you know, if I'm, if ever I get a free moment, it's probably, it's, it's more than likely given to them. You know, I'm, I'm rarely at the club just to be at the club. You know, if I'm promoting something or whatever the case may be, yeah, I will pop out every now and then. But I'm telling you, it's just, it's just different now, man. Like I, I, I love my fans. I love my respectable fans. I love my respectable fans. It's just something about that person that will just walk up on you with no introduction whatsoever and throw their whole armpit on they sh on your shoulder and pull the phone out, hey, snap, and then the caption be like, hanging out with my homeboy Neo. I don't know you from Sam, sir. You know, much love to my fans that'll run up. Hey, Neo, can we get a pic? Yeah, sure. Snap, and then they go on about their business. Like, yeah. You know, that's, ask. I appreciate that. He's saying ask. Yeah, ask. at the very least. Might be yes, might be no. Yeah. And if you're going to ask, don't ask when I'm like mid bite, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> or, or or I'm walking out the bathroom. So hey, hey, can I get a pick right quick? Can I wash my hands, pimp? Can that can that go down first before we do? The yeah, right. it, it becomes a bit much sometimes. Every mm -hmm. now and then. Yeah, Every now and then. just chill out on that just a little bit. Yes. Well, listen, I'm excited about the album. Um, you're acting. I'm pretty sure you've been working inside the quarantine. So definitely so. Movies getting ready to come out. Um, I definitely have some some small screen and big screen things in the work. Um, there is a TV show called Step Up High Water that we did two seasons for for uh, YouTube Red. That was a YouTube subscriber based programming. Uh, so in the third season we got picked up by Stars. Oh wow! So the third season is about to come out very very soon. I would recommend everybody go back and stream the first two seasons so that when you jump into the third season you know what's going on um uh, in the midst of uh filming the show we lost one of our cast members you know Naya Rivera when she, right. when she passed away uh much love to Naya and her Rest family peace, yeah. um but uh Christina Milian jumped in to uh reprise the role that Naya was playing and um I have to give props to Christina Milian about this because you know it's, it's a lot of pressure to step into a role that's already kind of been solidified by another actress right you know, for, for you to step in and, and to be this person that's been viewed as somebody else for for two whole seasons. But I got to say, she came in and, and like, like we didn't skip a beat. You know what I mean? And that just speaks to that to the actress that she is. So much love to Christina Milian and, and the whole cast yeah. of Step Up High Water. Be checking for it on Stars very, very soon. That's what's up. Now, yeah, you've yeah. done a lot of movies with big stars. Mm -hmm. Have you ever fanned out over anybody? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um... You know what? I, I I can honestly say that I've never fanned out. I've I've gotten just slightly cooler than normal. I've that has happened before. But I ain't never fanned out the way the way the way it was happening on the inside. I've never brought that to that to the outside, you know. But who was I, it? Um I don't think I've done it for uh, an actor or actress yet. But uh the the first time that I got to meet Michael Jackson Mm. That was a that was a fan out moment. I mean, mind you, I kept it cool, and and I was proud of myself because I kept it cool under under these conditions. Okay, he walked in the room, 
And his first words to me were, oh my God, do you know what my favorite song of yours is? Please don't worry about me, I'm fine. Wow. I turned into a 12 year old girl. Inside though, on the inside. Inside it was ah! But on the outside I was like, that's, that's cool, man. Yeah, that's, wow. That's, Right. That's you know what I mean? Like, that was yeah. That was that was the one moment that I that yeah, if I if I've ever felt like a 12-year-old girl, it was it was in that moment. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, I've learned a lot about you. <laughs> <laughs> and I appreciate you taking the time to talk with oh, us. Oh, come on. As do I. As do I. Thank you for having me. Could have had anybody sitting in this chair. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Anything you want to tell your fans before I let you go? Um, I just want to let all my fans know that I love y'all to death. Thank y'all so much for rocking with me all this time. It's been damn near 20 years, and y'all ain't skipped a beat. Self-explanatory, July 15th. Yes, indeed. Go indeed. get it. Thank you so much, Neil. Love.